Heavenly Father, we realize that the majority of people do not understand that Revelation 3.21, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, is identical to James where he says the judge standeth at the door. Not realizing, Lord, that it's a case settled outside the court itself, but back in the chambers <clears throat> where you declared those righteous, those holy, in contradistinction to those that are unrighteous and unholy. And they're filthy, Lord. We realize judgment has been passed in the land, and that's what this message Brother Branham is preaching is all about. And we pray that we might understand this, that this is not something that is to come, but it's something that has come and is going on already. And this, therefore, Lord, lines everything up in the Word as the prophet taught us. Help us to understand according to truth, Lord, and according to that which is within us, which we believe would be the seed of God. We'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, we're at number eight this morning, I believe it is, in Jezebel religion. And from pages 16 to 19, that's last night, we found Brother Branham revealing and denouncing organized religion as of the devil and it never ever was nor ever will be of God. And so therefore we have a, a prime statement here as to truth that organized religion, that any religion that is organized is absolutely not of God but of the devil. Now this is evident, says Brother Branham, because organization depends upon an hierarchy that makes the organized creeds and dogmas of the church and ultimate for them and for their clergy and for their people. In other words, the church then becomes the door to heaven. <clears throat> it becomes the one state wherein people have God according to their word, not according to truth, not saying that some do not have truth. An example of state-sanctioned organized church was Israel at the time of Ahab and Jezebel. That's when the church and the state got together. Now notice God's answer to this perversion. What is God's answer? God's answer is this. He sent Elijah with the vindicated, thus saith the Lord, which went into a Mount Carmel showdown. Elijah spearheaded a one-man vindicated, blistering attack upon the church state. The clergy of Baal and their licentious adherents were no match for Elijah, so they simply retaliated by hatred, <clears throat> ridicule, disassociation, by the entire organization and all organizations they could possibly get to help them. They put Elijah and, consequ and, and consequently God at naught. In other words, what God was doing, what Elijah was doing, <clears throat> didn't amount to a drop in a bucket, didn't change their course, didn't change their destiny, actually did very, very little, if anything, which of course it did something because the elect were concerned. Now, now, Brother Branham says we are promised the same Elijah message in ministry in America 
And though it does not turn the tide, even as it did not back there in Israel, it will reveal to the elect their state and their help at this hour and position them in the church in the end time. Now, all right. <clears throat> now, we truly understand that organization is condemned. <clears throat> so the word ministry of Brother Branham will be, will be one of judgment against the enemies of God. Now, this is something that the organizations cannot understand. Because as I told you last night, organizations uh, that are sanctioned by society, unless the society is truly corrupt, as it was amongst the Hindus, where they have the killer society, they band together and they become murderers, <coughs> thuggies, uh, as we get our word thug. And uh, you have other religions and nations that are completely heathen that have allowed various uh, types of things to happen which are truly horrible, such as witchcraft and necromancy and some of those things are attached to it. <clears throat> but when you speak in terms of society, as we know it from the Bible, and Israel was a civilized nation, and around them were nations which were not so civilized, but they were fairly civilized. When we talk of civilization, you understand that organizations are usually do-gooders. Their do-gooding, <clears throat> of course, is to is always in the sense like you get a Kennedy. <clears throat> there are notorious examples as are the rich men that are in Congress. They pass laws which they are sure will benefit people, but not uh, using their money. Always you will see organization is, is not as kindly intended as the people are led to believe. It's always a trap. As a Frenchman said, I forget his name, but I admit he is true. When anybody tries to do me a favor, I run to escape them. This is true. Too many people want favors. They want something nice. They want something done for them. They're, they are fall guys and gullible to these guys that lay the traps for them, which is always an organization. And you'll end up being the pawn in the organization. Organization is simply of the devil, pure and simple ABCs. Now, organization does not want to believe it because it starts out as a nice church. <clears throat> they start out with the light, and the first thing they organize, they have their creeds and their dogmas now because the truth, the life is passed on. They're living in a decadent stage, <clears throat> so organization must carry them on. And then they have, of course, the more organized they are, the more influence they have. The more influence they have, the more they have upon the state. The more they have upon the state, the more they get back in your pocketbook. So America starts as a truly religious nation, a little, little group. <clears throat> they really want something, but where are they today? Uh, a a semi-socialistic, semi-belevenant, absolute corrupt society that doesn't care two bits for white, black, yellow, green, or pink. Amen. All this talk about desegregation and nice things for the blacks in America is pure hogwash and a lie. <laughs> it's what it is. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're sentimental hogwash. <clears throat> all they got to do is practice the Bible. You don't have to worry about segregation. You'll be segregated all right from sin. And that's all you'll be segregated from is segregated unto God. Society of itself is condemned because it's organized. Organization is of the devil, period. So Brother Branham's ministry is one of judgment. As I said in my prayer, absolutely. John, <clears throat> in Revelation 3, and James said the same thing. Behold, I stand at the, no the door and knock, and behold, the judge standeth at the door. It's one and the same. You cannot talk about the good shepherd stretching forth his hand. You can't talk about the beautiful Jesus with a lovely expression and a great smile. You dare not do that because Revelation tells you what he looks like. He's the judge. And his face is like fire, and his feet is a brass that burned in the fire. And the judge is here. That's why the churches don't understand Brother Branham's message, and the Branham people don't, because they don't know who's here. Amen. I lift up my voice and tell them, then I become some kind of a dog. That's okay by me. I'm before the white throne now. Let's see who stands. I got Bible for you. I got what the prophet said. <clears throat> They'll still talk to their Pentecostal hogwash and nice, nice, nice. Kind old priest. You're right back to the same scenario. 
preachers haven't got the guts to stand and preach the truth. The people leave them. I haven't seen anybody leave here yet. If you leave, don't bother coming back because there's one thing wrong. Only one thing, you don't believe the truth. Nobody treats you evil here. Don't take your money. Don't ask for a plug nickel. Give, give, give all the time. This pulpit, give, give, give. I got the records. I got the cancel checks. I got everything. One thing we stand for is truth. And I'm not bluffing. I'm not to bluff. The word's been vindicated, not mine, William Branham's. He said, Judge. Revelation chapter 1, <laughs> Judge. I indict this generation. Sure. <clears throat> he laid it on the line, but the people don't want to believe. Organization is condemned already. They're already judged. The white throne has set in. The judge that declared the bride guiltless and free is the same judge that brought condemnation upon the earth and the fire must fall. That's Second Thessalonians chapter 1. And chapter 2 begins with the gathering of the bride to the word. Segregation by the word. No desegregation. Methods become Baptist, hogwash. Bride never becomes anything but bride. Not even wise virgin devolves to foolish virgin, and foolish virgin comes up to wise virgin. You got to get your line straight, brother, sister. <clears throat> All right. Judgment on God's enemies has been pronounced. No doubt this rebellion by organization against God is the last step until after at the white throne when Satan as in, in his entire organization, organization stands upon this earth and they said, let us now overcome the holy encampment and they come against the bride and their God to try to destroy them. That's what you see in organization. Now you're sitting here, do you understand what I'm saying? You got to go home and think it over. I mean I'm sarcastic and I intend to be because the only way I can reach people. Can't reach them any other way. You got to hit them so hard they get right in the guts of maybe listen to you. One guy smartened me up years ago. He was kind of a dumb head, but I didn't know he was going to hit me. I was re weeding in my garden. He came up behind me, got me right here in the solar plexus. I just about punched me out. Lost my breath for a while. No sneak attacks. I'm coming behind you and hit you. <clears throat> it's a straight eye to eye level preaching. This is what the prophet taught, and this is what was vindicated, my brother and my sister. So you're not standing on something superficial. You're standing on the solid rock of vindicated word by Almighty God Himself. <clears throat> so Satan already, in his last organization, <clears throat> is bringing the entire world together. And that entire organization of serpent seed, the iniquitous, will reappear after the white throne and attempt to destroy God and his holy people. That's organization. All right, let's get back then to page 19. <clears throat> Brother Branham is talking about this Elijah ministry that comes to America. And he said, we are promised in the last days that he will return to this country too. And he said, it's in Matthew 17. So let's go to Matthew 17. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham said, this country, you won't perhaps notice it in the book of Matthew what he takes it from. <clears throat> now, this is after he promised and saying, some of you that are standing here will still be standing when you see the kingdom of God come in power. Now, we know that it came in power as a vision. In 17, where he was taken up with three of his disciples, <clears throat> he beheld there was Moses and Elijah talking to him. Now, in verse 9, he said, Tell the vision to no man till the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. He said, When I come back, you can tell him about this. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes Elijah must first come? Now, notice, <clears throat> he said, don't say one thing about this because this is a phenomenal happening by vision. It only has pertinence after my resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? 99% don't because they get all messed up here. 
<coughs> his disciples then said, why then say the scribes Elijah must first come? Now they get thrown here because Jesus said, Elijah shall truly first come and restore all things. But I say Elijah has already come and they knew him not. <coughs> now listen, the Elijah that came was John and that's before his death. But what happens here, and he says, is after his death and resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so all of these guys, like even friends of Brother Branham, and uh, like, hey, I got nothing against the tabernacle down the street, Port and Jack Moore that's dead. <clears throat> but Jack Moore had the idea that Elijah was John and that's it. Now I'm telling you this morning by reading scripture, he's wrong. Because this refers to after the resurrection. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? If you don't shake your hand, say, go over it again, Brother Bill. And I'll say, my God, where have you been the last 10 minutes? So you saved yourself an insult. Not really. I won't slam you. But do you understand what this is about? He said, this what you saw is after the resurrection. John the Baptist was born a few months before Jesus was born. Six months, I think, or something like that. <clears throat> so, Elijah is truly going to come and restore all things. John never restored all things. <clears throat> he was a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord and make straight paths, and he brought a part of restoration. But he couldn't bring it all. Restoration comes by all that said by the mouths of all the holy prophets. <clears throat> There's a difference. And if you don't want to read the difference, you'll stagnate and die. And if you do, I'm sorry for you, but that's your tough luck. I'm preaching the word of God flat. Anybody can understand flat preaching. <clears throat> Elijah's already come. And they did to him what they wanted to do. Likewise, also, the Son of Man will suffer. They will kill me too. But watch, after the resurrection, which is the crux of the whole thing, as Paul said, if there's no resurrection, and all I'm serving Jesus for now is something that it, I don't know too much about, but it's on the other side. I was even caught up there, and I saw great things I can't utter. But if that's all there's to it and not a resurrection, I'm out of it. I don't want it. Now, a lot of people go around and they say, oh, how happy I am, how wonderful, oh, go this, oh, you mealy-mouthed bunch of clap-trappers, God have mercy on your stupidity. Can't you line with Paul? It doesn't come until the resurrection, and your glory will be fulfilled then. You're aching and I'm aching, we're all crying this and that, all unsettled, but my God, when we're resurrected, that's going to change the whole thing. We're crying for the resurrection. Understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay, now, there's got to be a restoration of the word of all the holy prophets spoke at the time of that Elijah. Then there will be a complete destruction of the earth. But remember, Abraham said, God, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he said, I'll, he said, I'll never destroy the righteous with the wicked. Not even one. Abraham starts with 50. <clears throat> per adventure, there might be 150, might be 100. He gets it down to about 10. God said, you're just, what are you blowing your steam off for, boy? I don't destroy any righteous with me. What are you talking about? Abraham couldn't save himself, save himself a lot of trouble. But see how man here rejects himself? He knew there would not be destruction of any righteous. <clears throat> no way, shape, and form. Well, that got in the place, of course, where he could put his son upon the altar. And God said, well, I'm not going to take him. That's just a here and tight. All right, now, he says here it's going to happen in America. Now, that's not written in there. But don't tell me a prophet doesn't have the power to isolate Scripture according to vindication and place it according to geography. Now, you want to be like Armstrong and his great evangelical church, which, you know, he's dead now. But he already understood. He said Germany was Syria, didn't he? Well, Germany's not Syria. Syria is Syria. Start reading some of his history and you'll find out where, <clears throat> where Assad and these guys come from and what's behind it. What's going on? The Bible doesn't change its mind. 
It sees people change their minds. They get all mixed up. They don't know what Brother Branham said. They don't know what a vindicated man said, so they stand in a pretty <coughs> intolerable position. So, now, you'll notice Brother Branham speaking of America. You've got to go back <coughs> now in your minds to understand the parallel that he's talking about, which is America likened to the days of Ahab, throws it right into the time of Christ because there isn't any difference, organization is organization, whether you call it blue moon, black sump, green cheese, or hogwash, it's organization. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't care if it's two miles this side of Eden or four miles past hell, organization is organization. And it's anti-Christ and anti-God. <clears throat> the Sanhedrin was an organization. You can't find any scripture reason for the Sanhedrin. There's no way you can find it. Go and search your scripture. <clears throat> but something came out of Babylon. <clears throat> they went to Babylon. They had a temple. They had a, they had a uh, priesthood. And they had a Torah. They came wake up with a Talmud and a rabbinical order <clears throat> and a synagogue. <clears throat> the church started. They took another Jesus, another word, another spirit. So where are they? Again, can't you see how beautiful the word of God is? You know, I love the word of God just simply from the, from the understanding of the mathematics within it, the logics, how it comes together. You can analyze, synthesize, the whole thing comes to perfection. So here's Brother Branham putting our day <clears throat> with Elijah, throwing it on to John, bringing it to America. Why? Because we build the image to the beast. America is the melting pot of every religion. <clears throat> You go to Germany, how many religions they got really? Two, Catholic and, and, and Lutheran. You go to Norway and Sweden, mostly Lutheran. So what about Pentecost? They're dropping the bucket alongside those guys. You come to America, we've got everything here from soup to nuts and the bolts thrown in. <clears throat> everything is here. I don't care if it's from some little island of the sea, we've got it all over here in America. And it's all organized. <clears throat> And it was set to the tune of the nations in 1948 in San Francisco, the World Council of, of Nations. <clears throat> and where did the World Council of Churches come from? Right here in America. Who saved Rome? America. American blood. Protestant blood and lives. Christians died for the old harlot. What are they doing overseas right now? <clears throat> And the Pope says, and there's a fight on us recognized between Gorbachev, Bush, and the Pope. And who's going to win? I can tell you right now, the battle's over. They're both kissing the Pope's toe. If I had to fight with any of you two guys in here for power, let's say a couple of deacons rose up against me, and you saw them come and kiss my finger, and they didn't bite it, you'd know I'd lick them hands down. Now, who do you think's won? The Pope. He's in the driver's seat. Do you think Bush can say, I'm the moral conscience of this world? He can't say it half as well as Gorbachev can say it. <clears throat> because the Russians are showing they are more of a moral conscience on paper than Americans are. So who's going to win? Who's won? <clears throat> the devil's won. All right, listen. The 12th chapter of Matthew, in the face of organization, when Jesus proved exactly who he was, set forth the word of God, completely vindicated, proved the Father was in him doing the works, <clears throat> they tried to kill him. The Pharisees held a council against him in order to destroy him because they knew eventually if he was left alone, he could and would destroy them. <clears throat> because they were living on make-believe. They were living on a bluff. The same as the Pope says, I am the successor of Peter. Hogwash, Peter never was in Rome. He was, he'd have blasted their hides from one corner to the other. <clears throat> Catholics believe the lie. My, 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 go to school, get an education degree and believe a lie. 
Isn't it funny the Jews want to do the same thing? How many Jews are Khazars? Don't have one drop of Jewish blood in him. <clears throat> Why do you think they talk Yiddish and they got a Hebrew alphabet? Study your history. Can you find your history books? I never found one word about a Khazar until I was in my 30s, late 30s. You can't find it in the histories. Been conveniently taken out. You can't find the truth anymore about the Huguenots, the Roman Catholics, what really went on. How many, how, where do you get Fox Book of Martyrs on the shelves nowadays? Hislop's two babblers. Where do you get those books? You can't hardly buy them. <clears throat> no. A complete whitewash. All right, it says here. Now, he, he, they want to destroy him. But Jesus knew it, withdrew himself thence, and great multitude followed him, healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I'll put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. When did he ever do that? He never went to the Gentiles. The closest he got was going down to the, <clears throat> to the uh, bastard city of Samaria. <clears throat> and he forbade his own disciples to do it. And after the resurrection, he said, you may go to Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. <clears throat> but when did he ever show judgment to the Gentiles? Well, come on. You see, you've got to bluff it. <clears throat> you have absolutely not just got to bluff it, you have got to take it to the point where you rationalize the whole thing. <clears throat> you can't do it. Now he said, he shall not strive nor cry, neither any man hear his voice in the streets. What about that? Everybody in Jerusalem could have possibly hear him, heard him. He, he strove, he cried, he beat up the priests. <clears throat> and his name shall the Gentiles trust. That absolutely is the prophecy of Isaiah for the end time. The place where he closed the book to open the book again. <clears throat> where it's closed under Daniel and the book was opened. <clears throat> No way will the people understand the truth because they're not prepared. They can't take it. <clears throat> They'll put their faith in a creed or a dogma. They're not content to go by the word of God. Now, what does Brother Branham say? He said, it's got to happen in America. <clears throat> and we, we can see where it has happened in America. But you cannot take this and present it to anybody in a rational way that they will grasp it according to understanding. There's no way they're going to get it because there's no way in there to receive a revealed and vindicated word. The word vindication is not in their vocabulary. It's an organization and pressure and power and force and prestige. Look at our numbers. <clears throat> Look what we've done. We got people healed the sick and raised the dead too, bless God. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. You can't convert people. No, they're too heady. They're too high-minded. <clears throat> There's no way that they'll take a prophetic ministry. They can't do it. Now, he said to John, John is quoted here in Malachi, from Malachi. Watch what he said. Elijah truly must first come, past, present, and future tense. Past, present, future. <clears throat> but he, he gave John as an example. John wasn't Malachi 4. John was Malachi 3. Behold, I send my mission for him to prepare the way. And that's what John said. I'm the voice of one crown, which make straight the way of the Lord, and so on. <clears throat> but Malachi 4 said, Before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come, when all the earth shall be burned like a stubble, before that day I'll send Elijah. <clears throat> <clears throat> now that's what the Bible teaches. Even Schofield knows that. It wasn't John because the Lord never burnt the earth when John came. If you notice in the last chapter, the last verse, he said, and watch, he's talking, he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of children to the fathers. Now watch, the first John came, the first Elijah, what did he do? He came and brought a message and turned the old orthodox hard hearts to the faith of the young church, the children. But when the next Elijah comes in the end, <clears throat> he's um, to turn the children's hearts, turn them back to the faith of the Pentecost of fathers. See the difference? He'll not be one of these here so-called Pentecost we have today. He'll go right back to Acts 2 and start from there. He'll preach the unadulterated gospel, just the same things that Peter did on the day of Pentecost, because what he said on Pentecost has vindicated the rest of the scriptures throughout. 
He'll not twist around some, some organization when Elijah comes. He'll hate wicked women like Elijah did and bad women like John did. <clears throat> uh, he'll be a wilderness lover just like they were. He'll not spare. We're looking for him to come. He'll come. God said he would come. He'll be here. <clears throat> now, you can understand there's a veiled thought in here that Brother Branham is repudiating the fact that he's Elijah. But remember, he well, later on we may read it. We get time today where he said he'll reveal himself. And he did in 1964 in, <clears throat> in November in, uh, in New York City in the auditorium there. All right, he said, well, he said, I might as well tell you. And he let the people know that he was Elijah for this hour, which he did many, many ways <clears throat> through multiplicity of sermons which he preached to us. Now, in here he said he's going to turn the hearts of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers. Now, he goes specifically to Acts, the second chapter. <clears throat> now, here's where a lot of Pentecostals that have that Pentecostal spirit say they've come out and they believe what Brother Branham taught, but they don't really believe it. They just say they do. And they always want to go back to Pentecost <clears throat> because there's where they go back to all their emotions. There's where they go back to all their evidences to the senses. But Brother Branham said the baptism with the Holy Ghost in this hour <clears throat> comes without anything visible or any sensation. Well, that's what he said. If he said it, then he's vindicated to say it. <clears throat> Otherwise, why would he say it? And he talks a lot about himself, of his emotions and how he feels and how he's done various things under the Spirit. So Brother Branham is not talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's just telling the truth. In spite of all the fact that there can be manifestation, there can be things that are visible, there can be sensations, don't put it down as the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> now, I know there's sermons out where you've said Brother Branham would put it down, but I don't remember him saying one thing about he knew it was the Holy Ghost making him do things that he came to realize what he was doing. He said one time he was running, found himself going down the aisle, pulling up his pant leg. He didn't say that was the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to say it wasn't. But I'm not going to try to get something to fall upon me, run up and down the aisle, pulling up my pant leg. <clears throat> or sit on this pulpit and wave my foot. Or think I'm anointed because I do something. What Brother Branham did at that time, I don't know what he did and what he did it for. <clears throat> but that does amount to a hill of beans along one thus saith the Lord. That's what I'm standing on, not what a man does. <clears throat> or what happens in some extraneous way, though I'm not going to say it's not God. I believe it was. But you can't put it down and say that's the way it works. <clears throat> he said it comes without any sensation. <clears throat> A true baptism, that's how teaching takes place by the Holy Spirit, making you to know if you've got that seed in here, which is life, you'll respond to the word which has life in it. You won't respond to some dead dogma and creed. Now the second chapter of Acts, what did Brother Branham always go back to? He went back to 2nd 37, 30 to 39, <clears throat> especially 38. Then Peter said, Repent and be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ, mission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now watch, for the promise unto you and your children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He always stood on it. And the Catholic Church said, We can forgive sins. He said, Yes, if you do it according to the Bible. He said, What's that? And he told the Catholic priest, Acts 2, 38 and 39. <clears throat> you give them the word. And then let them stand with that word and see exactly where that word goes. <clears throat> now, he said, not as Pentecostals today, no way, shape, and form, but as it was in the beginning, <clears throat> which was a genuine baptism with the Holy Ghost where tongues were not the evidence. Because when they came down, they were speaking their own languages, and God turned those words just right in the Greek. It's not what Pentecostal <laughs> teachers say, and they know they're wrong. <clears throat> right in the Greek, it shows the words were turned to them. The listeners heard them in their own language. As I said one time, a German lady heard me preach a sermon in German. I don't speak German. Except I ain't I drive here to peep or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I read the funny paper, it says good dog or something. I don't know. I don't know the first thing about German. <clears throat> she heard the whole thing. I was speaking German, I was speaking poor English. Rapid gunfire, too. I know some people went down into Peru, Brazil, or somewhere. <clears throat> they heard the guy preach in their language. The interpreter sat down. The man never used one word of whether it was, Port it was Brazil or it was Portuguese. I guess it was Brazil, I'm not sure now. <clears throat> the guy didn't know one word of Portuguese any more than I do. 
And it's different from Spanish, an entirely different language. I understand it is anyway. Might be a little similar in kind of the Latin background. <clears throat> the interpreter sat down, and everybody heard him. That's what happened at Pentecost. Amen. That's not the evidence of the Holy Ghost. You know what the evidence was at that time? It wasn't the language per se. As though here a man is speaking a tongue and they're hearing this wonderful way in a, in a supernatural hearing. It was the Word. That's what he's given for, the Word. <clears throat> and they caught the Word. So the evidence was this is truly the Holy Ghost because it's proclaiming the truth. And you go back to the foundation. The Pentecostal foundation was they took at that hour the exact word at that hour. It was manifested and God proved that he was with them. Now I said that set the tenor for the whole Bible. For all the rest of scripture. What happened to the Apostle Paul? <clears throat> On the road to Damascus he gets smitten down. Go on to the uh, Cornelius <clears throat> and, then the, and the street calls straight. Down his house, he'll lay hands on you, you'll get your sight, you'll get the Holy Ghost, and then you go out there in the desert. That's the same thing, same pattern. <clears throat> You've got to go back to the originals, but you don't go back to Pentecost as though it's a bunch of emotion. Brother Branham denies that he's talking about 20th century Pentecostals. He's talking about 1st century Pentecostals. And believe me, read the book of Acts, and they're not like we have them today. Where do you get short-haired floozies? <clears throat> Women are wearing slacks. Women preachers. Where are you get women running the roost? Running the country. <clears throat> you get them where God put them. That doesn't demean them. Women should understand the resurrection. They're going to have what they've all been looking for. Not just the men. Not just the men are up there. Don't worry. Now, who is this bad woman about John the Baptist? <clears throat> She's over here in the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Her name is Herodias. <clears throat> what is she? She's the wife of another man because she used to belong to another man. She left him for his brother <clears throat> because he heard he was the guy with the power. Matthew 14. It's in there somewhere in 14. You can see it. Okay. It says here, that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of Jesus' fame. He said to his servants, this is John the Baptist, risen the dead. Therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. And Herod had laid hold on John and bound him for, put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. She was living there as his mistress and plumb out in adultery. <clears throat> and John the Baptist condemned it. Now you show me a nation that's got more divorce than America. <clears throat> There's no nation rottener. And I say, why? Because they had God here. America's roots were not in pure heathenism, as some tribes in the Congo were over there in New Guinea, some islands of the sea, <clears throat> the New Hebrides back in their days of complete paganism. America had its roots in God, but they've lost those roots, and that's why the Bible said their roots, they'll be neither left neither root nor branch at this time because they don't have any roots in God. Remember, the roots in God are trees planted by the waters. And they stand in the judgment. They're not blown away like chaff. That's all you can say about the wicked. They're chaff. They come from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they're chaff. Whoever heard of a tree having chaff? <clears throat> Can't do it. Now he said, he won't be twisted around by organizations. He won't be worked around by women. He'll love the wilderness, like John, like Elijah. We're looking for him to come. God said he would. He'll be here. I believe, if anything, the message that we got today will forerun that great coming of him. <clears throat> yes, sir, he's on the road, already born, like Elijah was, and come busting out of the wilderness. Somewhere he'll make himself known. <clears throat> said he already made himself known. He'll um, preach Acts 2. He'll bring the faith of these Pentecostal children right back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers. <clears throat> he'll go right back to Acts 2.38. See, like I read. That's the Acts 2 he's talking about. He's not harping on the speaking of tongues and making some great thing of that. He already denied that's an evidence and showed what it was. The people were prophesying. The people heard him in their own language. That's how the gospel got going. And he excoriated the fact Pentecost says, well, we speak in unknown tongues. He said, Pentecost, they had known tongues. He got the cart before the horse. <clears throat> so don't tell me he's going to go back to what this hoopla the Pentecostals have. I'm going to tell you another thing. Paul wasn't at Pentecost. You see, Paul, Paul said, I was one born out of due season. 
So he was still born out of due season. Don't try to make something out of that. You think God slipped up on his timing? No. Everything right on schedule. He had it exactly right. And Brother Branham kept saying, he said, we ate with them, we slept with them, they did so-and-so. But to Paul was given the revelation. Amen. Nobody could touch him. <clears throat> Nobody could touch him. No, sir, he was the one. He made everybody else stand still. Now, he'll bring the real unadulterated gospel. In other words, there's been nothing at that time added or taken from it. There wasn't the first church age a little later on. He'll not have anything to do with the Jezebel and her system. He'll be a servant of God, sure will. The Bible said he would come. He'll prophesy and bust his message in the face of these Jezebels, just exactly like Elijah did to Israel. <clears throat> They'll hate him. They won't cooperate with him. No, he'll come. God promised it. He'll rise on the scene. He'll preach to the elected church. Um, as it said he would, shaking that elect, shaking the carnality off of it, the world and the things of the world, shaking it down, boiling it down, bringing the church together, <clears throat> a people. Now, there's no way he can do that outside of some vindication. <clears throat> Look, a lot of us have had church experiences. I was brought up to begin with in the Presbyterian church, but the man didn't have enough on the ball to really have altar calls or they wouldn't let him. I knew he had something, but it never got through to me. <clears throat> the Methodists and Presbyterians got together, forming the first council of churches, real council union in Canada. <clears throat> they were a mess. The preacher they brought in was a big, fat type of person who was all brains, and he didn't have much brains because he let his body go to pot the way his big, fat stomach was and all. Completely denied the virgin birth and everything about the Bible. <clears throat> the next guy was a former Nazarene holiness preacher who was completely disillusioned with their ridiculous doctrines <clears throat> of entire sanctification, went back to college, and he received a beer stein for being the politest man in the whole college, theological seminary. And he was a fine, fine man, a beautiful skater, thin, tall, upright person, Scottish, <clears throat> a man of... Integrity is the world calls integrity. But to him, the Old Testament was a book of mythology, comparable to what the Norwegians and the Greeks and the rest had in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> so he preached nothing. So I belong now to two groups, both deader and dodos. If you're certified Presbyterian or Methodist, you got a certificate to hell, a one-way passage. It's a permanent visa. <clears throat> and you ain't getting out of there. <clears throat> All right, the Pentecostals came by. Already I prophesied to my mother my sister would not get better till she had prayed for her. I don't know why I said it. I said it. And I knew it would come to pass, and it came to pass. So I became Pentecostal. Ay, ay, ay. From Pentecostal, <clears throat> Baptist. From that, nothing. And now this. Now the point is what I'm looking at here <clears throat> is that every one of us, most of us at least, have some experience with what we came out of. Now the point is we were duped. We were deceived. We simply believed in the organization because they had a man who was supposed to know and we pledged to it because he was supposed to know. And he didn't know. And he would tell us we didn't know. But he gave us some kind of a flimsy, whimsy hope, bless God. If you sort of, you know, sort of, sort of, sort of, you might sort of. It's exactly right. And I did. I pulled the wings off of flies and cussed under my breath him and God and everybody else because they couldn't stand him. Yeah, all right. I went through the organization. I'm trying to tell you something about it. Hey, <clears throat> you couldn't, can't trust them. They're not vindicated. When I saw this vindication, that did it. If I'm going to have anything, I want that. If I can't have that, then I got nothing because I got no place to go to. Now, I could tell women this, and women say, oh, wow, you're a church tramp. Big, loud mouth, stinking Jezebel with your teeth sticking out. Your tongue air cooling because you're talking so fast. 
prostitute to God and religion and man. She types the church 100%. She ain't nothing but filth. And she'll stand there as though she's got something. That's your stinking organization, your churches. You look at your women out here. They tell you right from the ground up. Read the books. They're being written by women. <clears throat> There'll be women priests, I suppose. <clears throat> Pope at this time doesn't want it. And for a good laugh, I hope he sticks to his gun. It's just a laugh. Because he's got no substance. <clears throat> so, all right. <clears throat> you can't trust them because there's no vindication. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham says that this messenger is going to shake the carnality off the bride. He's going to shake her down, pull her together. <clears throat> So she's going to be what Brother Branham talked about, that masterpiece. Now, Christ was one masterpiece. The bride was another. Now, you can't look back on the masterpiece of Jesus because that's done, gone, and finished. He always was and he always will be. He couldn't be anything else but because he was. <clears throat> but the bride went through things that he didn't go through. Okay? And he went through what we didn't go through. We, let, we couldn't have our bodies after theophonic forms. A body commensurate to the gene. He did. He laid it aside and came down here and took on a physical. And then he had to bear all the suffering and all the degradation, every single thing. And he knew he stood there holy with God in him. And he let them call him everything under high heaven, do what they wanted to do. And he said, that's all right, you can do it now, but later down the road you won't. Now that he's here in the form of the Holy Ghost, are they going to get away with it? Come on. <clears throat> Let's just read the scripture and find out about this. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Now, it says in verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, for one morse to meat sold his birthright. <clears throat> Sell it for church membership. Call it the kingdom of God. For you know afterward, when he would inherit the blessing, he was rejected and found no place repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. What do you think that white throne's like? Oh, Lord, we came in your name. We did these works. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, listen. We didn't know better, but we did this. Now, it says, isn't it okay? Can't we get in? <clears throat> the Bible said even Lake of Fire is the place where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth on the grounds that people sort of made that up, but the Bible mentions the gnashing of teeth and the weeping and the wailing. <clears throat> what about then? What about the rich man in hell? He lifted up his eyes and he repented, which means he changed his name. He got a revelation, but he got it too late. Now this man got a revelation, got it too late. And they knew not till the flood came and took them away. There are going to be millions of people know that I'm preaching the truth when it's too late because I got it from vindicated William Branham, the judge is here. Why aren't the, why aren't the Branhamites preaching it? <clears throat> why don't they tell the truth? Because they're trying to put a new patch on an old garment. And you're going to bust out wide like a bursted skin, brother, sister, if you try that today. I've taught you and taught you sincerely almost 10 solid years now. From 1977, not one sermon outside the presence of Almighty God and His prophet vindicated His word coming to pass. <clears throat> 13 solid years I've preached. And 13 since March, Jan April, March, April, May, June, July, August, never. <clears throat> more than 18 months. <clears throat> Six more months on top of 13 solid years. Where are you today? You, you'll never point your finger at me at the white throne. There's no way you can do it. Not according to this part of the subject anyway. <clears throat> you make no mistake about it, because I'm going to stand right there. And I got hundreds of documents and messages. How many hundred sermons you got back there, Joe? 400 of them? 800. You show me one ever led you off track. <clears throat> now listen to me. Fornic this guy was a fornicator and profane. Now listen, there's profane history and there's religious history. <clears throat> Which means one is purely, simply, social and worldly, and the other purports to trace the things that are spiritual. This man was entirely profane. He said, my gut's empty. I'm starving. Give me some food. I'll take that. Bless God. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. <clears throat> Hope deferred, I don't have any time for. I'm a bread and butter man. I'm a potato and egg man. I want it now. He wouldn't take time. 
<clears throat> to look down the road like Abraham did and Isaac did and, and his brother Jacob. He was a fornicator. He was profane <clears throat> for one morsel of bread, for his pension, for his prestige, for his in with society, for his good name, for his acceptance. That's organization. He said, I'm with you boys. If you can't take your place outside the cap with Jesus, there's something wrong with all of us. I can say that. Now listen, he was rejected. Now listen, for you're not come unto the mountain that might be touched that burned with fire and run to blackness and darkness and tempest. <clears throat> this is something you can't touch. Back there when they touched it, it was literally a mind-boggling explosion. Earthquake, thunder, voices. A vindication before a multitude of people. <clears throat> Tell me where that differs from 30,000 people in Africa, half a million, or maybe 300,000, 30,000 God's saved. One thus saith the Lord, <clears throat> a doctor saying behind William Branham's back, what a, cr a cross-eyed boy, that was psychology. And Brother Branham whirled, and he said, you're better psychology than I am. You try it. The man later was repentant and got saved, became a Pentecost. Oh, how much good that's going to do? <clears throat> I really don't. I hope to God it does, but I don't. I got no proof of anything outside this word. What's the difference? <clears throat> you know, they had, a, they had a picture years ago called Earthquake. Charlton Hesson was in it, Ava Gardner. <clears throat> Who else? I forget anyway. And they had the sound equipped in the theater when the earthquake was going, the, the theater rocked. It was good. It was funny. I enjoyed it. You would too if you were there. It was a fairly clean movie. It's many, many years ago, so it had to be fairly clean. What was done was behind the doors, you know. <clears throat> Not the stuff they have today. But you know, I'm trying to tell you something. Listen, if you were rocked this morning in your seats, I'm going to tell something to you. That's not the answer. I've been all through that. I've been all through that. I've told you time and time again phenomenal experiences I've had. Merciful God, how hard. What do you have to do? I was literally on my knees in a Pentecost. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I was not even 20 years of age praying for God to give me some revelation, to give me something. And as I prayed, a vision came. I was picked up to my feet. My eyes start wide open. I heard myself say, watch and pray, Jesus is coming soon. I was picked up and slammed down just like that. And the cement floor of my body started to shatter like a watermelon. A mother couldn't lay her baby quieter and gentler on a, sp a pillow of feathers. What did it do? Nothing led me completely astray, <clears throat> as though I had something now. Had nothing. You shake your guts out, shake your head off. You're outside the word. One thus saith the Lord settles everything. Amen. Yeah. One thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. There's peace in the valley. Look, I'm looking at you. I've had visions. Prophesied. Prophecy come to pass one or the other. Listen, I can prove what I'm saying. Don't call my bluff or I'll take you right to the people. Because I don't bluff and I don't lie. I don't cheat and I don't steal. I don't commit adultery. And I've got no axe to grind except the word of God. And the Bible said, Cursed is he whose sword doesn't draw blood. You put that down to understand why I'm preaching the way I preach. <clears throat> Listen, these things, my brother and my sister, let's listen to them. This happened, and it says, you are not coming to that. <clears throat> you will not have that. That is not yours to have. And it didn't do them any good. They couldn't endure what was commanded. If so much a beast touched it, or stoned or thrust through, and so terrible was the sight, I exceedingly quaked. But you are come unto Mount Zion. No thunder, no lightning, no earthquake, no flip-flops in your belly, no nervous distractions, <clears throat> no breakdowns, no kookism. You're coming to your destiny. You're coming to your destiny. The presence of God guaranteeing it. And nobody knows when he arrives. The word Prusia means... It's the event itself 
the person being there a mystery what will be the sign of thy presence and the Bible tells it <clears throat> and then it goes on and declares the presence will be revealed as known to be it per se because of the Son of Man ministry he's here Amen. he's here there's his prophet there's Elijah you're come unto the <clears throat> notice you are come to now Mount Zion under the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to a new company of messengers, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all. <clears throat> now, you're standing in the presence of the judge. No earthquake, no flip-flops in the belly, no bright stars, no emanations, no hey, 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 hey. No pinball machines. <clears throat> judge. You ever stand before a judge? It's a treat. It's a treat. Sarcasm again. I don't care if it's just a parking ticket, <clears throat> speeding down the road. I don't care if it's a false call. You got called up. I don't care if it's jury duty. <clears throat> I don't care what it is. You stand before a judge. You're under the thumb, kid. You don't tell the judge nothing. You try and see what happened to you. They'll take you out and hang you up by the neck. They'll see that you never get a, 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 your case in court. <clears throat> they got the power. Rotten frauds and crooks got the power. This one is not a fraud. There is not a crook there. His integrity stands. Thus said the Lord never failed. So now, with the judge, and that's the key, you're right before New Jerusalem. No, Jerusalem comes after a white throne. Three before a white throne. Right? Oh, yes, we're talking the Bible. We're not talking fools. <clears throat> and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's end time. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Now, look, you got up here a judge, and now you got Jesus, <clears throat> the mediator. So, therefore, the mediator is not here at this moment. The judge is here at this moment. <clears throat> the lamb climbed on the throne and he's still on the throne don't worry and he's made a promise through the judge you'll sit with me in my throne as I sit down with my father in his throne you're ready for the whole thing <clears throat> and the blood of sprinkling to speak of better things than that of Abel see that you refuse not him that speaketh <clears throat> now <clears throat> you're talking about somebody that's here prior to all of this and this going on now. You see why I preach as I preach? We are there, brother, sister. Whether now that I know it's hard on my mind. I know it's hard on my tongue. Can't even say it. It's hard on my heart. Look, it's hard on me. It's hard. I get the fact and understand this morning. I am not giving you a bunch of hogwash and baloney. It's tough on me. I speak like a crazy man, like a complete jackass and idiot. But I got Bible for it. Abraham believed God who raises it in and calls those things which are not as though they were. Period. And I'm beside myself. I'm a jackass. I'm a coop. I'm an ass. And I'll walk out like those birds did this morning with their funny hats on. Let me tell you this. Don't you think your dress gets you anywhere? Gets you nowhere. Oh, brother, sister, there is such malarkey going on. Make an Irish Pope vomit. There's so much crap going on. That's saying a lot. <clears throat> Refuse not him that speaketh. <clears throat> oh, God doesn't talk anymore. My Bible says he does. My Bible says at this great scenario, which involves New Jerusalem, the judge is talking. Now, for if they escape not, who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we... Turn away from him that is from heaven. So somebody from heaven's got to come down here. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now it's promising, yet once more I shake not earth only, but heaven. <clears throat> so now the speaker's going to shake the heavens. Shake the heavens? Certainly. Satan's got to get kicked out. All these cohorts blasted. He can't have access there anymore. <clears throat> then the heavens got to melt with a fervent heat and be uh, dissolve and come back. Now listen. Whose voice then shook the earth, now promise saying, yet once more I shake not the earth, and heaven also. 
And this, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are made. See? That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, what can't be shaken? The Word of God. You say, Brother Bell, is that true? I'm going to read it to you. Therefore, we it says here, it says, which cannot be shaken. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God as every reverence and godly fear, for our God's a consuming fire. <clears throat> now, where does that go? That goes right to Hebrews 6. He's talking about Hebrews 6. <clears throat> and it says in Hebrews 6, you go to perfection. <clears throat> but they wouldn't do it at that time. Now, at perfection, what happens? The dynamism of Matthew 12, the return ministry of Christ, the Son of Man ministry, through a prophet, God himself having descended with a shout, here, <clears throat> takes the good word of God, even the authority and power of the world which is coming, which is here now, having fallen away, what from? The word. <clears throat> They'll never come to repentance again. So what's he saying? He's going to shake the bride, plump out of every organization and every word that's off one jot, one tittle. Because all that's going to remain is the word. Because the Bible says, Thy word, O God, remains and abides forever. <clears throat> God and his word is one. Now notice, it talks of a consuming fire. <clears throat> so this is the end time. Now the consuming fire starts with the pillar of fire. It settles upon the earth at the end of the tribulation. <clears throat> it purifies the world. Then it comes back again to dissolve the world and to recreate and bring anew. Now, all these things are happening at this time. Now, how do they happen? All was over here in Philippians. Not Philippians, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> Thessalonians, <clears throat> the second chapter. Now, he says here, it's, in verse 6, it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation and to trouble you. And you are a troubled rest with us. Come to a place of relaxation. And you'll relax only when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed in heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. <clears throat> and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that disobedience started way back there when they changed the word, they changed the spirit, and they changed the Savior. Romanism. <clears throat> and it's all that she got daughters too. Don't think, don't think it's Rome alone. It's, she's got her daughters everywhere. Now they're going to be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And the glorious power when he's going to be glorified in his saints. <clears throat> See? Now it says, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that proves you right there, and by our gathering together unto him, that you soon be not shaken in mind to be troubled, either by word nor by letter. <clears throat> he tells you right there, <clears throat> don't you ever believe anybody according to their word. Then what are you going to believe according to? Vindication. You understand what I'm saying? He tells you right here, <clears throat> neither by letter, <clears throat> spirit, nor word, nor by letter. <clears throat> now, the point is, what if a spirit does come in and it brings some kind of a sign and wonder? It'll take you right off the word. And it can only do that once you've turned down a vindicated prophet so you know what the word is. <clears throat> because if they left the word 2,000 years ago, <clears throat> How far are they off of the word today? And yet the whole word's got to be restored. So what are you going to do? You're going to go back to the book of Acts, the second chapter and the third chapter. <clears throat> the second chapter says, Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone's baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you've heard of the Holy Ghost, that's the command of God. But what does it say over here in the third chapter of Acts? <clears throat> we go back to the book of Acts. Re verse 19. When times refreshing shall be Come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which was preached before unto you, whom the heavens must retain, till the restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets of the world began. <clears throat> so it tells you right there. <clears throat> you got to get shaken, plumb back to the book of Acts, and you can't go back to Pentecost because that message won't save you. The prophet said so. Why can't these guys that want emotion say everything the prophet said? <clears throat> One guy says, well, Brother Brown said, listen to tape. So I, everybody just thinks. He also said, there's books. He didn't even have books. He's read a book. He also said, preach the gospel. There's only one gospel. That's the end time message. 
You want to take part of it. Why not take it all? We hear tapes, we read, we read the books, you hear the preaching. <clears throat> if I'm supposed to quit, I'll quit when God tells me. Not when somebody thinks he's quoting Brother Branham. That's a lot of hogwash. <clears throat> so they quote, say, go back to Pentecost. Let's go back to Pentecost. Pentecost tells you distinctly the Alpha will repeat as the Omega, and when it does, there'll be anointing upon all flesh, and you'll go into the Great Tribulation right afterward. Acts 3 tells you what? <clears throat> There's going to be Christ. Give us a time of refreshing, which Brother Brown has said is a great healing revival, bringing a new message. Bring us the entire revealed Word of God. Then comes what? In total destruction. <clears throat> now we've gone to the book of Acts. You can't do it any other way. And when you do, you go, to, you go right down where Paul came on the scene. <clears throat> and you get down where they admitted that Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, and Peter withdrew. <clears throat> so let's go back to the book of Acts, like Brother Branham said, not what they think he said. <clears throat> now listen, he's talking here. He'll prophesy and bust his message in the face of these Jezebels, just like Elijah did in the beginning to Israel. They'll hate him. <clears throat> they won't cooperate with him. He'll come. God promised it. He'll rise in the scene. He'll preach the elected church as he said he would, shaking the elect, shaking the carnality off of it and the world and the things that were boiling it down, boiling, shaking it down, getting the church together, <clears throat> getting the people there. And what's he talking about? I'll tell you, he's talking to the Pentecostals because they're the ones that are sitting there. <clears throat> now, they're not the organized Pentecostals because the church, because the church, as Brother Brown has said in this message here, they don't come together. Some of them come out. Some of the assemblies of God are there. Some of the oneness are there, but mostly latter range. They're Trinitarians. <clears throat> and the Trinitarians, latter rainers, he's going to hit in this next paragraph. Listen, I know you say that's my denomination, brother. You're wrong. John came. In other words, he's saying here, my denomination and my people, the way we believe, we're going to bring this Elijah ministry. <clears throat> this is us. We're the ones to reveal the word and bring the renewal. Because they talk about renewal. Everybody talks about renewal. I don't care two bits renewal. I want resurrection. You're going to have your stupid renewal. I want, I want to find that in the Bible. I can't find renewal. I find renewal to the mind by the word. <clears throat> A renewed mind. That word's not renewed. It means transfigured. That's metamorphosis. That's transformation. We're talking physical now. Caterpillar to butterfly. <clears throat> now he says to these guys here, these Pentecostals, John came as a one-man system to introduce a one man, Christ Jesus. The Elijah system, Elijah and Elijah will not be a system. It'll be a man. Jesus said so. It'll be one man that's anointed of the Holy Ghost. He won't introduce any three or four gods. He'll introduce one, the Lord Jesus Christ, because his message will shake the Pentecostal children back to the faith of the fathers. Now there's the Pentecostal message. There's Acts. <clears throat> God sent his son. The son died, rose again, paying the penalty, sent back his spirit, his soul upon the people. <clears throat> You're getting it. Now listen, what do these Pentecostals believe that sat on their brother Branham? Oh, we're an Elijah company. I know, listen, I was with them. <clears throat> we're a company. We're Elijah, yep. We're going to do it. We're getting vitamins out of the dead sea and live forever. That's a good one, that is. The vitamins are deader than they are. I don't know about that. I think they're deader than the vitamins. Because <clears throat> vitamins are good. I don't care where they came from. They came from a dead sea or they came from a polar bear. It doesn't much matter. You get a lot of vitamin A. Yeah. <clears throat> That's where they are. But the people didn't like his preaching. And he never went back there again. Sat in the hotel. <clears throat> and said, Brother Branham is a prophet when he tells you things about yourself, but don't listen to the doctrine. What good's a prophet? <clears throat> what did Elijah do? Get him full of goosebumps, scaring him? Scare doesn't do you any good. You have just, you can, listen, you almost have your life scared out of you. What's that do for you? Bless God, I want some life scared into me. I'm dying now. I ain't having half the fun I used to have. I wake up in my mind, you know. I mean, like my wife yesterday, she <clears throat> took out a piece of salmon because I like salmon, and we, <clears throat> when it's nice and red, we take a little piece and cut it up and freeze it. So she forgot where she put it. She tried to put it in the frying pan. The butter's beginning to burn. Where's the piece of salmon? Looked all towards the salmon. I thought to the garbage get away. She forgot she put it in the microwave in case it needed a thawing. But well, we finally found the salmon. <clears throat> hey, look, we don't need this stuff they talk about. I want a shot of life. 
We need it in our house. How about your house? <clears throat> We're kind of run down at the heels, both our toes too. Don't have callus on the heels, got corns on the toes. I want resurrection, I want life. Nothing else going to satisfy. I'm not worried about Pentecost. Listen, 94, you remember, brother, if I say these things to be, I don't say these things to be nasty. If I, if I say them to be nasty, then you need to go to the altar. I'm telling you, it's thus saith the Lord. If God hasn't, now listen, if God hasn't vindicated, I've told you the truth, around the nation, around the world, then tell me where the mistake was. Now, there it is right there, vindication. <clears throat> On vindication and perfect faith, this man could say, listen, if God told me to raise Abraham Lincoln, I'd do it. You watch and see me. Go right there to raise him. And then you listen to somebody else. Listen, you came away from your goofy hats and your goofy religion. Why did you bother coming away? Put your little hats and fancy things on again. Or better still, cut all your hair off and as much as you got like, go out there and booze it up, sister. Have fun, brother. Go on. You see what I'm trying to tell you? This is the ultimate. It's all over. This is the shakedown. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> actually the, ta the tail end. You're caught in a hurricane. <clears throat> You're not going to get out of it. Vindication. God hasn't vindicated told the truth. He said, I am telling you the truth. Get back to God quickly. Get out of those systems, because the Bible says in the book of Revelation, the Roman Catholic hierarchy was a whore, and she was the mother of harlots. What is it? It's a church system, churches with their systems. <clears throat> That's what it is. She has about religion. We could have it right here as independents. They got it all over the country. People I know, people came out like one guy. I admire the guy. Absolutely admire him. <clears throat> Right away, he knew there was one God. He said, what's this preacher telling me about three gods? He said, there's one God. He knew it. He left all organization. <clears throat> he believes in one God. Turn Brother Brown up, flat as a fritter. <clears throat> They've been coming out by the millions, but they're not going in. And the church is run more and more by people, the full gossip businessmen. <clears throat> My Lord, have pity. They said, oh, the preachers made such a big mistake. They're, they're, you know, they, they, uh, they didn't do the job. <clears throat> We're going to do the job. All the magazines lobbed. Everybody got behind them. Where are they today? <clears throat> what have they done? Took them all to Rome. It's all over. See? Jezebel religion. Jezebel religion is every single solitary thing outside of this word that has been revealed by vindication. <clears throat> I don't care if you say, I follow Brother Brown's message, that doesn't mean for nothing. <clears throat> doesn't mean a thing. <clears throat> this church has only one purpose, established for one reason. It's laid right out there, not to hear Lee Bale preach, although I do the preaching, that's understood. <clears throat> I'll go someplace else, that's no problem, I'll still preach. Because some man says you shouldn't preach, that doesn't mean nothing to me. He's not my God. I've listened to him. <clears throat> We're established for one reason. That's because there was a man called William Branham. With thus said the Lord, prophet of God, we believe he is the Elijah of this hour. We believe there's shortly a resurrection. We believe in the presence of God, the just judge of all the earth. We believe in everything that man said because he had thus said the Lord. And though many things we don't understand are puzzling, we still know thus said the Lord means thus said the Lord in his Bible. <clears throat> and I can understand it. David wasn't much of a guy at times, but a man after God's own heart, numbered amongst the prophets, <clears throat> the type of the prophet king, stood there with all of his sins, but the word of God was in his mouth. It was, thus saith the Lord. David's been dead for over 2,000 years, but the word of God still lives on. The same word from that man's mouth because it was God's word. We've gone back, brother, sister, <clears throat> to the Pentecostal fathers. We've gone back to the faith, the original faith, predicated upon the real truth in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts is not specifically a book of doctrine. It is a history. <clears throat> you want your doctrine, you go to Paul. And when you go to Paul, you go to John the Revelator and you see what happened and what is happening. 
We've been turned completely back, and there's only one way it can be done, and that's by repentance, which is a complete change of mind, which means kick out that dirt and that, those heresies, those dogmas, those creeds, that dead stuff in you, kick it all out and fill your mind and your mouth with the Word of God until it comes back and forth and back and forth and it begins to live. And as it lives, it gets expansive and then something gets a hold of you and said, that's truth and I'll die for it. Nothing else is truth. And remember, the devil does the same thing, but they die for it. We're not going to die by the grace of God. Let's rise and beat us, man. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for your love and mercy to us, Lord, which has been indicated and vindicated in this hour. <clears throat> we know, Lord, that there's not going to be very many that turn, that, that turn to it, Lord. And far be it from us, Lord, to turn anybody away. But, Father, if your word that's preached hard and stronger turns anybody away, that's their business. It's not mine because I will not soft pedal as far as I know from your own word, Lord, from your own prophet that confronted me face to face on the very issue. So, Lord, if I am not arrogant and I am not disobedient <clears throat> and I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but stand with this word and know that any time I punch out, I punch it myself even stronger than anybody else because I know my own fallibilities, my own, mis my own ways, Lord. They're, they're difficult ways. They're hard ways to grasp and to stay with these things because so many things come against us. But, Lord, stand with it by your grace. I will do because it's only by your grace I'll do it. Believing there's a people here that stands with you, Lord, and together we stand and shall not fall but shall go on. And God, as the prophet said, shake everything off of us. <clears throat> shake every creed and dog, everything that can be shaken, Lord. Only your word cannot be shaken because everything is made by your word and maintained by your word. And if your word could be shaken, Lord, then that which is made and that which is maintained would be shaken. But Father, if we get that living word that cannot be, it's creative and cannot be shaken, but is, but is maintained, <clears throat> but maintains, then Lord, we know we're on safe ground and the rock of revelation will not let us down. We build our house not upon the sands and gravel and shifting things, but upon a solid rock, the true revelation to God, and we will stand and everything else should be shaken down until we become a part of the rock. Lord, we know that's coming up in the future because your own word says we're going to be like you. We're going to see you as you are. We saw you as you are, Lord. To a great degree, we don't understand all of it, Lord. I wish you might make it known to us exactly how these things take place, exactly what you said in your word. And, and whether they understood it perfectly, I don't know. I believe Paul understood. I believe that, <clears throat> that Abraham, I believe Moses, I believe Brother Branham. And Lord, I believe there's a place for our understanding. And we pleaded you this morning to give us understanding and the measure we have need of, O oh God, that we might have these things, not that we might pray about them, might not show them off to somebody, it, that we might aggrandize ourselves by them. But Lord, for the sheer revelation, the, 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 the desire in our hearts that we might know thee, as Brother Branham preached on, <clears throat> the soul panting after you as the heart pants after the water brook because there's life there. Panting after life. So Lord, we pant after you for the living revelation of the living God, that we might know you, even as the scripture says, not for any other intent, but for the soul benefit, mutuality of great God and Father. And we standing here believing, hopefully, we are your sons. So we stand, Lord, in your presence at this hour, making this little feeble prayer, but with the intensity of our heart. Bless your people, O God. May there not be one that fails of the good word and promise of Almighty God. Help us to that, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Trish, you still with us? Come on up. I'm pray for you. You know, the Bible said, blessed be the fruit of your womb. And I tell you what, if there ever was a time, you better bless the fruit of the womb at this hour because what's in this world, the baby's affected, God knows what. They say, you can drink coffee, you can't drink coffee. You can take drugs, you can't take drugs. They thought at one time that little membrane in the womb there, the blood came, it separated, you know, the impurities. It lets it go right through. If ever was a time to pray, now's the time to pray. So let's pray for a sister here. Trish. God in heaven, we know that many things are not exactly as doctors say, and they know it. We know it, Lord. Sometimes they say good, and it can't be good. Sometimes they say bad, and it turns out good. Remember cases ourselves where a prayer was offered, the baby's been just wonderful and normal. So, Father, we pray, blessed be the fruit of this girl's womb, Lord. May she have whatever this baby is, boy or girl, perfectly whole and healthy, Lord. God. May it be delivered properly, Lord. May there not be anything wrong with it. In spite of what's in the world today, oh God, protect your own, for you made a word of promise, Lord. Okay? Thousand fall lip and ten thousand right, it shall not come nigh. May nothing come near this baby, Lord, but let it be for your glory. Not expecting a super child, Lord, is an unusual case, but Lord, just in your promise today that this is our hope and our trust and our reality. 
And so we pray for her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We just believe everything's good. Take the name of Jesus with you. <coughs> Amen. <coughs>